It's exactly one year since Cyrus Mistry was sacked as the Tata Sons chairman, followed by an acrimonious battle between the Tata group and the Shapurji Palonji group, a large shareholder in Tata Sons. One thing is clear, there was no love lost between Ratan Tata and Cyrus, but what remains a mystery till date is the exact reason why they fell apart. We have with us Mr. Nirmalya Kumar, who was part of the all-powerful Group Executive Council of Tata Sons under Cyrus Mistry. Nirmalya, you know the inside story. What triggered the slugfest? So I have to confess that if you call me for that part of the interview, I really don't have a good answer. You know, because if you remember the initial press release that was done, they didn't give a reason. When they were pushed later to give a reason, they came up with multiple reasons over time. One of them was lack of performance, one was the lack of strategy, and the third was that he was giving too much business to the SP group. Now, if I take it from the bottom up, giving too much business to the SP group, we released the audited results to show that it was 1125 crores in 2012, went down to zero over 2015. The reason it took three years to get it down to zero is because infrastructure project is not like selling a car. You can't walk out the next day and say, I'm leaving the project, right? So that was it. So that's not it. Then the question about the performance, well, we know that in the three years that he was in charge, his uh, what you call dollar figures in terms of the big, we always compare against the Bombay stock Sensex, right? The XX. So Sensex rose by 3.3 percent. Our under CPM rose for the three years 23 to 26, 2013 to 2016 rose about 7.6 percent. So performance cannot be the reason. The third is the lack of strategy. Now after one year, the strategy I see Chandra falling is from straight from a strategy playbook. So I doubt that that is the reason either. In fact, you recently uh, uh, written a blog about the chain of events on the 24th October 2016. I mean, you also gave out exactly what happened before the board meeting, the all-important yeah. board meeting. But tell us something. Uh, Cyrus didn't have a clue as to what was going to happen before he actually met Noria and Ratan Tata? So Cyrus had no idea that he was going to be fired. Okay, now whether Cyrus knew there was some tension between him and Ratan Tata was probably true. That he knew there was some tension because he was trying to, he had 28 meetings with Ratan Tata over his three and a half years, which is a lot of meetings, right? And the, each meeting was about three to four hours long. You know, so on average, he was spending a lot of time trying to convince him. But, you know, sometimes people forget that the job of communicating to Ratan Tata, what Tata Sons was doing, was not Cyrus Mistry's job at some level. Absolutely. It was the job of the two trustees of Tata Sons who were sitting on the Tata Sons board. They were supposed to communicate in the Tata Sons board meeting what are the concerns that the trusts have with the self strategy and relay back to the trust Absolutely. what is happening in the board. And they did not abstain or vote against anything in the three and a half years that Cyrus Mistry was chairman. So it was very hard for us to know that the trusts are not happy if the two trustees who have been, the two board of directors who have been nominated by the Tata Trust to sit on their behalf are not saying anything negative and are only saying positive things and are participating. So, you know, how would we know that the trusts are unhappy? They have their two nominees, one third of the board, whose only job... The is signs were definitely there because this is for the first time that Ratan Tata was attending a Tata Sons board meeting ever since uh, Cyrus took charge. So, but that was only five minutes before. We did not know he was coming for the board meeting until five minutes before when he walked into Cyrus's room. So till that time, we did not know anything about Cyrus being fired. And I don't think, si and Cyrus also didn't know anything about him being fired. In fact, what was your first reaction when, for the first time, N.S. Rajan whispered to your ears that Cyrus Mistry has been sacked? I, I know that you were attending yeah, yeah. an important yeah, no, meeting it's a, it's that a, day. You know, the thing was at that stage, I couldn't believe it first. But then, you know, I said, okay, this is what it is, right? And you really don't have a reaction because it's so out of what you believe, because you believe that here is a man who is best suited to be the chairman of Tata Sons, who is doing an incredible job, who has been evaluated by the Tata Sons board and the NRC community of 15 companies or 10 companies at least, all giving him positive reviews. So it's really unexpected shock. That's all I can say. It was shock. But Nirmal, you tell me something. I mean, you've also interacted, I'm sure, uh, with uh, Ratan Tata during your stint in the Tata group. You had, on more than one occasion, had an opportunity to interact with him. What is your sense? The business-like attitude of Cyrus actually had to pay a price for that? So, I have to say that actually, 
I only met Ratan Tata once for 15 minutes. That's it. That's right? it. Mm -hmm. You know, that job of managing Ratan Tata was really being managed by Cyrus Mistry. And for me, the way I looked at it is the more I stay out of the way, the better it is because let one person manage that rather than. So I really, that's why when people ask me, what do you think motivated Ratan Tata to do it? I say, I'm not the best place to give that motivation because I don't know the man. For me to understand his motivation is very difficult. Yeah, I mean, obviously you don't know him well enough. But do you think it's also a part of the bigger story today, which uh, the media is also talking about, many experts are also talking about, about uh, the refusal of the promoters to let go. And we have seen that play out in more than one occasion. Yeah. So I think, you know, it's a bit unfortunate. But if you look at India in general, whether you see in the political domain, whether you see in the sports domain, mm -hmm. whether you see in the corporate domain, whether you see in the bureaucrat domain, you know, in all domains, we don't know when it's time to leave the stage. And when we leave the stage, we still want to have influence. You see this not only in the corporate domain. And so my thing, when people ask me, what is one of the learnings that you had from this episode as an academic? I say one of the learnings I had as an academic from this is when you leave, please do leave. I'll come to the lessons for sure. Mm -hmm. but. That's a little later. On the on the, what's your reading, and how do you how do you compare whatever happened in the Tata Group with the kind of uh, things that we we saw play out in Infosys? There seems to be some connect between the two. So the connect is in both cases the promoter found it hard to let go. The difference is that in the Tata Sons board it was a board without a backbone. When the promoter told them to do something, they immediately executed it. The Infosys board, on the other hand, showed that it was a true board because they resisted the promoter and said, no, we have backed the CEO. We have approved all the CEO strategies. So we have to keep backing the CEO. There's no reason to suddenly say that the CEO is doing the wrong thing because whatever he's doing has been done with our blessings. Just like in Cyrus's case, whatever he was doing was done with the blessings of the Tata Sons board. None of them ever abstained against the strategy documents, right? Except that the Tata Sons board showed it had no backbone, whereas the Infosys board showed it had great backbone and defended the CEO. Yeah, definitely the role of the independent uh, directors also came under the scanner. And the, and the chairman and everybody. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But even in case of Infosys, we have seen a lot of independent directors who have stayed on. I mean, they were completely unaffected by whatever happened with the company. Yeah, but what do you expect the independent director to do after that, to, re to resign as a, in a fit of peak? I don't think they're going to do that because, you know, Infosys is one of the best paying boards in this country. Nirmalia, what is your first assessment of Chandra? I mean, he hit the ground running. I mean, whether it's Tata Tele, whether it's Docomo issue, whether it's Tata Steel. I mean, we've seen him taking positive steps, steps from day one. Yeah. What's your init initial so assessment? You have of the to remember, day? there's a difference between the steps taken and what is in the press. You see, yeah, I think one very important point to remember is when Cyrus Mystery was taking steps, he was not revealing to the press what steps he's taking. So people in the press did not know what steps he's taking. So I'm going to give you three examples, right? One was that there was an NPA of 5,000 crores in Tata Motors because to pump up sales, they had not done a quick, good verification of the people who were buying cars and giving them loans. That 5,000 crores had to be written down. Now, if Cyrus Mistry had gone to the press and said, do you know I've written down 5,000 crores of NPAs because we had sold cars without doing proper checks, people would have said, this is a flaw of Ratan Tata. And Cyrus was very careful. He said, Nimalia, if we go and talk to the press about these things, then they will see it that we are criticizing Ratan Tata and Ratan Tata will feel embarrassed about these things. Second thing, IHCL. In three years under Cyrus Mystery, the Indian hotels wrote down almost 70% of its net worth. They sold the international properties, some against resistance, some they couldn't finish to sell, right? Again, you could, he could have gone, you would have said, oh, he's restructured IHCL, he's restructured Tata Motors. Then in Tata Steel, I mean, the write-downs have been more than 10,000 crores. He went to UK, managed to get the things that were necessary. See, because when he went to do the Thyssen deal, Thyssen said, we are not going to touch you. We are not going to touch you until you fix four things. Number one, you get rid of the weak plants in UK. Yeah. Number two, you reduce, do the cost restructuring to get the cost down. Number three, you invest in these remaining plants so that they become world class. And number four, you solve the pension plan. Before that, we can't have a deal, but we're happy to do the deal after that. Right? So for three years, Kaushik and his team worked nonstop to get these things done in place. But of course, if we had gone to, the, we didn't go to the press and talk about it. You know? So Piaggio Aereo. See, when Cyrus came in, 
there was the Piaggio aerospace I mean. thing. He closed it down. Why? Because we were going to lose another thousand crores on that, and we had to take a write down of thousand crores. But that was a pet project of Ratan Tata. Had we gone to the press and said we have closed the Piaggio thing down, we were making Ratan Tata look bad. And Cyrus was very clear. There's two reasons not to go to the press to talk about these restructurings. Number one, it'll make Ratan Tata look bad in the press. We don't want him to feel embarrassed. And number two, it will make the employees of the other struggling divisions feel uneasy. But in they, hindsight, what could he possibly have done differently without, without making things difficult for see, Ratan Tata? He could not have, again, we would not have done things differently. That is the one thing we have learned over this, that you know we could have done what we did. Now, in Chandra's case, he can openly go and say, I've solved this problem. Why? Because of the unfortunate leakage of the document of 25th October of Cyrus Mystery, all the problems are now known. So yes. he's not revealing any problem to the press anymore. You see, so he has that ability to go to the press and say, I'm solving this problem. In Cyrus's case, he would have to first reveal the problem and then say, I solved it. So there were 25 exits we did, you know, but we never talked about it. The divestments we did, we never talked about it. The restructurings that we did, we never talked about it. You know, in Tata Chemicals, we sold the fertilizer business, which was a low margin, highly regulated business. The whole fertilizer business was sold. In Cyrus Mystery, but he never came around and said. But I let's said, look at, for example, the Thyssen Group joint yeah. venture with Tata Steel. I mean, is the structure very different from what you had envisaged? No, no, I mean, it's exactly the same. In fact, we had done all the, as I told you, not we. Kaushik Chatterjee and his team worked night and day for three years to put in place those four things I told you. The pension sell, plan, which was yeah, the stumbling. Pension yeah. plan, sell the weak assets restructure the cost of the remaining assets and add investment to make them world class. It's after the three years of that work was done, only then could the platform be set where you can go and make the deal. Same thing with the Tata Tele services. Cyrus had a deal with Vodafone. But Docomo is hanging for a very long time. Yes, and... but the Docomo problem can only be solved once the government gives you permission. Absolutely. To, right? So we were going all the time to the government. In fact, Cyrus was not asked to but we decided in Tata Sons to put the 1.17 billion in an escrow account. Reason we did that was two reasons. One reason was to tell Docomo, we have good faith. We intent want to solve this there, problem. Yeah. Our intent is there. If you can get the government, we are working with the government, you work with the government. If you can get the government to give you a dispensation, your money is lying there waiting for you. Right? And no Indian promoter would put 1.17 billion in an escrow account like that. Right? We did it. Second reason was the Vodafone deal could not be done until, or no deal, in the telecom could be done until the So that was a way of ring fencing that so that we could tell Vodafone we have ring fenced that problem. So it's not going to come after we do the merger with you. How different is the Bharti Airtel, the deal with Bharti Airtel compared to one you were looking with Vodafone? Very different. So the one with Vodafone was that we would give them Tata Sky, Tata Communications and Tata Tele services. All three. In return, they would give us a substantial but not a majority stake in Vodafone India. Right? The advantage of that was that at the outcome of this was a company, Vodafone India, which would be number one in direct to home, number one in the enterprise business and number two in telephony. And we would have a substantial stake with a partner who is a global leader in this industry and committed to this industry. Okay? For that, we needed to solve the Docomo problem before it happened. By the time the Docomo problem was solved, Cyrus had been fired and then Vodafone said we are not interested in this deal anymore because they had moved on with idea at that stage. And so the only deal that was available was the Bharti. And so Bharti, what did Bharti get? They got 40 million customers and all the spectrum for only free. Only the jobs were saved. I mean, that is the one big I thing. I don't think, were, no, but there has been no, this is a misunderstanding because there has been no guarantee given, given, no though. undertaking given by Bharti that they're going to keep these deals. And this was announced 15 days before Diwali. So you think, uh, I mean, it's not a great deal for the employees as well, I mean. Listen, I'm not going to say it's not a great deal. I'm going to tell you it's the only deal available. There is no other deal available, right? So in a sense, Chandra could not do anything else. That was the only deal available. That's why you're willing to give it away for free. Because if you keep it, then you have to fund the losses on every single day. So that's how Bharti et al. got both Telenor and uh, what you call it. Because it's reached a point that it had become completely unviable. And this was no, happening it was, over no, a it period was unviable of time. for the last three years. Yeah. Okay. We were funding the losses and looking for a deal. So in fact, Cyrus Mystery spent a lot of time with the Vodafone CEO to try to get the deal because he wanted something that would A, be done and B, still give us with some valuation to it.
turn to Tata Motors. I mean, obviously, Chandra's focus is on return on capital employed. Yeah. Very clear. I mean, yeah. he wants to give a boost to profitability, turn around both the commercial vehicles as well as the passenger car business. But the fact of the matter is, Nano is still untouched. I mean, what is your views on that? So again, if you go, and you know, the press can go to the le legal system, all the our strategy document has been filed with the NCLT. Absolutely. So you can get the copy and you can see whether we had this strategy or not in that document, right? Now, in passenger vehicles, one of the big things that Cyrus did was he put in a lot of investment in the product development. And for the last year, you're seeing the product. Yeah, the last out. two, three last products two, have been, been very good, right? Yeah, yeah, and the next two, three are going to be even better when they come out on the new platform. Now, Chandra is going to get all the benefit of that doubt, but that was better. Secondly, for the Nano, the Nano was losing, in Cyrus's time, if I remember correctly, approximately 1,000 crores a year loss. Now, you have to remember the passenger vehicle department is about 9,000 crores in revenue. So, 1,000 crores is it's quite a lot of loss on one line, right? And People said you need to increase volume to reduce the losses. But the problem with the Nano was that it's losing money on a variable cost basis. So the more you sell, the more money you lose. You're not making a fixed cost, but you're making a variable cost. So volume increases losses. It doesn't decrease losses. But Chandra so, made it very clear that the losses on the Nano are very insignificant. It's 1,000. It's 1,000. Uh, I don't know about 4%. Mm. All I'm saying is 1,000 crores. Now, if you whether you think 1,000 crores is insignificant or not depends on your income levels, right? Uh, for me, 1,000 crores is still 1,000 crores, right? But I think Chandra will close down Nano. You know why? He said he's going to be stingy with capital. Yeah. He's going to be unemotional. And he's going to make decisions based on return on capital. In, in which case, I think Nano's days are numbered. But when it comes to the commercial vehicles business, yeah. I mean, this business actually slid over the last two, three years. I mean, this has done quite badly. More than that. And that's more than that, maybe. Yeah. Although it has a bearing with the general state of the economy, but I mean, Tata Motors suffered more than others. I mean, Agreed. That, that's Agreed. the general feeling. Yeah. So what is it that led to this kind of a situation that it's, it's, I mean, Chandra has reached a point where he's almost giving them a timeline of three months. You have to turn around the commercial vehicle yeah. business. See, again, you have to remember the commercial vehicle business of Tata Motors was so strong that it had become both complacent and arrogant. That happens to all dominant leaders. And so the turnaround in the culture had to take place, the current investment in the product. So again, you will see that the commercial vehicle product, Cyrus personally was, you know, spent a lot of time trying to get the commercial vehicle for, uh, product right. And he also went and met a lot of truck drivers. In fact, there's a famous photo of him eating at a dhaba with the truck drivers and to try to understand what is their life and to make sure that this product development is meets the needs of both the truck driver as well as the fleet operator. So, yeah, there's a cost restructuring that was needed there. There was a quality improvement that was needed there. There was an NPA problem that needed to be solved there. There was a sales and distribution problem that needed to be solved over there. So there were multiple problems that needed to be solved at the same time. And that is what was worked in. So a lot of good work has gone in. A lot of investment has gone into that. In fact, uh, the Tata Sons board recently uh, moved the proposal to take the company private. I mean, although it will have to be vetted by NCLT. Yeah. What's your reading of uh, the, the, the plan? Yeah. So taking Tata Sons private means that you don't have to meet the same level of governance standards, number one. And you don't have to release the same amount of information. So transparency goes down. Okay. So once you take a company private, those are the two effects. Now, I want to ask you, Tata Sons is critical to the development of India. Tata Sons is critical to the operating companies. The decisions in Tata Sons impact at least 700,000 employees as well as dealers and suppliers. Is it good? And the profits from Tata Sons decisions go and help millions of Indians in the charitable work that is done. Is it good for a company which is as central to India as Tata Sons is to be behind a veil? You know, so I am against that only for that reason. I'm not worried about what will be the effect on Cyrus Mystery's stakes and all that. I'm not bringing up. I am saying based just on the fact that Tata Sons is so important to so many people in India, you want it to be more public, more open, high standards of governance. In terms of governance standards, I mean, a lot has been yeah. said over the last one year. I mean, what is your reading? I mean, has Chandra taken that as a priority area too? I mean... So when Cyrus got fired in November, when they had the, you know, talk with the investors, the Tata Sons people promised that they would come up with a new governance framework, which they will present to the investors to tell them what decisions and what information is being shared by the promoters. We have not seen that now one year later. 
When I hear what Chandra is doing, he is saying there is the Tata Sons board, there is the Tata Trust, he is putting in place some clusters and cluster leadership. So my question is very simple. From a governance perspective, is the CEO, let's say the head of retail cluster is Harish Bhatt right? and consumer. Does that mean that Bhaskar Bhatt as head of Titan reports to him or reports to his board? Does that mean Noel Tata reports to as head of Trent reports to Harish Bhatt or reports to his board? You see, because the problem is that you are creating a forum which is outside the board of directors, another forum. You are, so we came up with the cluster strategy, but we never implemented it because we were struggling that in this quest for simplicity, are we making things more complex? And what does this mean for the governance standards in the Tata group? Because you are creating, for, now you are saying that a for, there's a board of directors who's in charge of the operating company where the minority shareholders' rights are also represented. Instead, we are going to have a forum which is the cluster forum. We are going to have a forum which is the Tata Sons board and we are going to have a forum at the Tata Trust, all of which are going to say what should be done at the operating company level. Well, then you don't have the right governance standards because then you have created these three additional bodies and the CEO is thinking to himself like Anil Sardana, now there's a head of infrastructure. CEO is thinking, do I report to my board? Do I report to Tata Sons? Do I report to Tata Trust? Or do I report to the cluster head? Nirmala, let's also talk about the Tata brand. Do you think the appointment of Chandra, in a way, managed to do some damage control when it comes to brand Tata? Listen, the brand Tata has resilience. Absolutely. Right? I agree with that. Having said that, there is no doubt that it took a hit. Right? And that hit will take, and brands are like rubber brands. You can stretch them so far after which they bear, you know, snap. So it snapped. Right? It will take some time for the Tata brand to come back. Whether it comes back or not depends on the actions that happen with the Tata operating companies as well as what happens on the governance standard. Right? See, there's one part of the Tata brand is with the arm janta. That may have been impacted less. There's another Tata brand which is the corporate reputation, which is with the investors, with the elites of this. I think on that there's a big hit and I don't think just appointing Chandra will fix that. For that you will have to show real change in governance standards. Yeah, real change is definitely required. Yeah. Finally, on to my last question, Nirmala. What's the one big lesson from the Tata boardroom battle? So the one big lesson from, I'm going to now combine the Tata boardroom battle and the Infosys battle. You see, when I was a global academic, for the last 20 years, my papers, my articles, my books, and my consulting practice showed that I was a big supporter of Indian business. And when I would present about Indian business in 60 countries across the world, people would say, Nimalia, what are you talking about? We have heard about Indian business as being corrupt and, you know, shoddy practices, no governance standards, all of this. I would say, gentlemen, please don't say that. You can't tar everybody with the same brush, right? There are companies like Infosys and Tata who do things differently. The problem that has happened now is after these two things, I cannot stand up with a straight face and say that to a global audience. Because what these two battles have proven is there are no non-Lala companies in the India. Every company in India is in the end a Lala company. That's a very sad comment. It's a very sad commentary. And it's, it hurts me to say that because I was a defender of Indian business, but now I cannot stand up and say that Indian governance practice. Because what we have shown is you can be an independent director provided you're not independent. I'm sure India Inc. will stand up to make sure the reputation is gained once again. Inshallah. On that note, thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Nirmalia, thank for speaking much. to you. Thank you. Always a pleasure.